Hey everyone, I'm Hashem. Thanks for watching Pushing Film. My last video on the channel was all about bulk loading your own cinema film. And in that video, I explained some of the pros and cons and the cost savings that are offered by uh, loading your own film. And if you're not too familiar with all of that, how the film looks and some of the extra steps involved, go back and watch that video and you'll get a better idea of uh, why I'm doing this one. And this video is all about removing the Remjet layer. Because I know if you're watching this, there's a good chance you're interested in loading your own cinema film, but you're a little bit concerned with uh, removing the Remjet layer. And it might not be the most effective method out there, but it's what I find to be the simplest and the cheapest. So if you're not familiar with Remjet, if you look at two different examples of film, you can see that this roll of Kodak Vision has a, a Remjet layer on it. It's this dark, almost black layer of carbon on the film. And in this B-roll, you can see in the uh, side on the right, you have the film with the Remjet layer on it, whereas the normal roll has sort of a brownish gray finish normally. And as you can see in this footage, if you run this piece of cinema film under warm water, working temperature water around 40 degrees, it doesn't simply just wash off that easily. So what you need to do is to make that water alkaline through the addition of something like baking soda. As soon as we add a bit of baking soda to this water, you can see that the Remjet layer just starts to come off quite easily. And this is essentially how I remove the Remjet layer when dealing with cinema film. You make up a solution of water with baking soda in it and you let it soak in there, agitate it, and you should find that the Remjet layer mostly just washes off that easily. Now you can get certain solutions or mix up your own according to recipes from uh, Kodak, for example, which might involve mixing borax or sodium sulfite or whatever it is, a number of different ingredients. But I find it's not quite necessary when baking soda works so easily and is really cheap and available. You can buy pre-made solutions as well, and they might work with uh, a little bit less time and less agitation. But again, baking soda is what works for me. So this is how I remove it and I will show you how I proceed when developing my own color film at home. So normally when I'm developing cinema film, I do it in C41 color process. And at the beginning of that process, there is a step which is a pre-soak. It's where you soak the film in working temperature water, which is normally about 38 or 39 degrees Celsius. And that is to soak the film and also warm up the, the developing apparatus, the tank and the reels, so that you can proceed with the rest of the development. And that is the step in which I remove most of the Remjet. So you make up a solution, as mentioned earlier, of working temperature water with baking soda. Now, what ratio do you use? If I was to research this online, I would find multiple answers to this question ranging from one tablespoon per cup all the way to one tablespoon per liter. And to be honest, I've tried both and both of them actually work fine. So what I tend to do is strike it somewhere in the middle and use about uh, one tablespoon or 15 grams per four or 500 mil. You can really play with this as long as you make that water alkaline by the addition of baking soda, which is about pH eight or nine, you will find that it works perfectly fine. So once you've made that up, pour in the correct amount according to the amount of film you're developing. And what I do here is just give it a couple of simple agitations and let it sit for about a minute. So you can let that solution work its way onto the Remjet layer and then proceed to agitate that tank for about a minute in which case you will then pour out that, that water and find that it's coming out almost black with all that Remjet coming off, even in that first rinse. So what I do then is pour in the remainder of that solution that I've made, shake it around again for maybe 30 seconds, pour it out, and you'll already see that the water is getting clearer. And after this step, I just pour in regular working temperature water without baking soda in it, shake it a few times, pour it out, and repeat that a few times until you find that the water runs out clear. And after that, you can just proceed with developing your color film as you normally would uh, by pouring in developer for the appropriate amount of time and then bleach and fix or combined blicks. And after that would normally be a rinsing stage. So at this stage is where I would recommend, and personally I do, uh, do a final removal of any remaining Remjet. What you might find at this stage is that not all the Remjet would have come off in that initial rinse. So you might have some stuck to the edges near the reels, for example, or some little spots along the film. So that's why I would recommend at this rinse stage, take the film off the reels and using a bucket or a tap or both, just rinse the film in working temperature water, but also giving it a wipe. So you can use your hand with glove on or just a, a nice little sponge or something and just give that shiny side of the film a final wipe 
to get rid of any remaining Remjet layer that might have still been stuck to the film. And following this, you can just proceed with the final steps of developing, which is to stabilize. And if you're using Photoflow or whatever, you can decide to do whatever you want there and then hang your film to dry. And that's really as simple as it is. You have yourself some nice shiny vision or other cinema film ready to dry and, uh, and to have scanned. So that's my method. That's what I do for removing the Remjet. It's nothing special. It's what a lot of people out there use, which is just simple, cheap bicarbonate soda. So that's it. If you have any other questions about the process, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you're not familiar with shooting cinema film, maybe check out some of my previous videos on the channel. I've done a lot of content about shooting Kodak Vision 3, for example. I've done videos on scanning it using NLP. I'll link some of those videos in the description, but definitely check those out if you're not too familiar with some of the other uh, aspects of shooting cinema film. And again, leave them in the comments if you have other questions, but I hope this helped. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you on the next one.